This is the Microtasker project. In this directory we have simulation files. The Microtasker directory contains drivers, the operating system and some other integral part of the projects like LCD library, UTFAT and Modbus. We have some tools which are used for combining files, making files for bootloaders, etc. We have the stack. This is the TCP IP stack which is integrated into the project. We have a hardware directory which is especially for the Kinetis. And then we have applications. The project contains three applications. The bootloader, the serial bootloader and the microtasker application itself. So if we look in this folder we see, apart from uh, various header files and um, C files, uh, we find some project directories. We have the GNU project directory that contains everything we need to build the standalone project. We have IAR that contains an IAR project. We have Atolic, we have Kinetis Code Warrior, Roly for Roly Crossworks, we have uh, Microvision. And we have a simulation folder as well for the Visual Studio project. Seeing as Code Warrior is the mainstream development tool for the Kinetis family, I'm going to show you now how to import the Microtasker project to it. To import the project, I do right click on the project view and command the import. Then I choose General, Existing Projects in Workspace, and Next. Here I browse for the project directory on my computer. After finding it, I click on the OK. I don't copy the projects into the Eclipse workspace. All I do is click on the Finish button. The result is that the project appears in the Projects window. If I expand it, I'll see that I get a very similar structure to the structure that I saw in Windows Explorer. Code Warrior is a little bit special because it's based on Eclipse. So what we find here is not three different projects, one for the bootloader, one for the serial bootloader and one for the main application, but instead we find targets for these. We have the bootloader target, we have the serial bootloader target, and we have three different targets for the main uh, project. We have the one which runs in Flash, one in which runs in RAM, and one which can run together with the standalone or with the main bootloader. I'm going to concentrate on the Flash version. So I can now navigate to the application directory where I'm looking for a file called config.h, which I'm going to open up. Now config.h is the central file for configuring our project. What we can see here are the uh, Kinetis um, device types. Now I've decided uh, the first project which I'd like to show is a project on the Freedom KL46 board. So I'm going to choose my processor type KL40 and I'm going to disable the one which happened to be enabled already, which is that on there. Then I'm going to scroll down until I get to the uh, KL40 board which is supported. Here I find the tower board and the freedom board. At the moment the tower board is selected so I'm going to comment that out and I'm going to comment in the freedom board. So now I've selected my device type and I've also selected the board which is going to be running on. So now I'm going to configure the project slightly. Now what I'd like to show, because this board doesn't have Ethernet, is I'll leave the uh, serial interface enabled and I'm going to enable the USB device interface 
and I'm going to choose the project running an HID mouse. So the final thing I'm going to do to complete the configuration is to check that the I2C interface is enabled, which it is. The reason why I'm doing that is because we're going to use the accelerometer on the board um, as a basis for the mouse control. So we're getting pretty close to being able to compile the project. However, before I do that, I'm going to check that the properties are correct. So I'm just opening up the properties of the project and I'm going to go into the uh, C, C++ build directory and I'm going to go to the settings. There are in fact only two settings which I need to select. The first one is the target processor because I'm going to be using a KL type which is based on a Cortex M0 I'm going to select that here rather than the M4 which happened to be selected. The next setting I'm going to check is the linker script file which I find under linker and general. Here we can see that we presently have a K type linker script file set with one megabyte of flash, 128 kilobytes of RAM, which is not suitable for our KL46. The KL46, I need to select KL. I know it's got 256 kilobytes of flash and it has 32 kilobytes of SRAM, so I've selected those now. And now I'm ready to build the project, so I command the build. Once the build has completed successfully, we can download the code to the board. Now to do this, I'm not going to be using the debugger, but rather I'm going to be using the flash loading utility, which I'm showing here. Now the advantage of the flash loading utility is that you can load any binary or S record file to the device. So what I'm going to do is to check first of all that I have the correct connection. Now this connection, the flash SDA, is suitable for the freedom boards. But my flash configuration file is presently for the KL25, which happens to be here, and that's not matching our board. So I'm going to open up and select the KL46256, which is on our board. And once I finish that, I'm going to browse to the binary file so that we can download it. The Code Warrior output files are stored in the project directory under the Kinetis Code Warrior folder, and this is the flash target which we just uh, configured for. And now I have found the binary file which I've which I can select. With our flashing interface set up correctly and also the board connected, I can now start Erase and Program. Here we can see that the programming was successful. We don't have to be worried about the fact that nothing's happening after the loading because it's always necessary to first remove the power and reapply again and now we can see that there is some activity taking place. We also remember that we configured a USB mouse application so I'm going to connect the second USB which is the one to, to the microcontroller. We see here that the USB enumeration is successful. So I'm going to have a try at using this as a mouse now. So now I'm controlling the position of the cursor. I'm going to select. So 
some text and there we prove that we've got basic mouse functionality. This video has demonstrated how easy it is to start with the Microtasker project to build a project for a board of your choice using Code Warrior. However, this single package allows immediate operation with Kinetis types of your choice and also a number of Freedom and Tower Kit boards as well as from other providers. Whether your focus is on the small KL02 or the big K70, this one package will do them all.